a secret. No, no, no. Like, come here. I've never had a Padron before. Is that bad? Well, I'm going to now, so hopefully that fixes things. What's going on, everybody? I'm Cigar Show Tim, and you're watching Tobacco Talk, where every week I review a cigar, give you my thoughts on it from my palate, my perspective, draw, flavor notes, burn, construction, everything you want to know, and hopefully educate you a little bit in the process at the same time. So if you like that kind of content, make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell, and you'll get notified every time I put out new content. So this week's cigar, as the title says, is a Padron. And it's a little guy. This is the Padron 1926 series, and I got it from the Battle of the Bands competition that Cigar Prop Kevin Shahan, a buddy of mine, uh, was in. So I bought the pack, wanted to support him, and I thought, hey, there's a Padron in there. I've never had a Padron, so what better time than the present to, well, have a Padron? So this week's review is on the Padron 1926, and I honestly don't know what the Vitola is called, so I'll just tell you what it is when I come back. But that's this week's cigar. Let's light it up. All right, everybody. So this week is the Padron 1926, and I looked it up. It is the 1926 Maduro number 35. That's a long name for a really short cigar. So it is a box press. It's a Maduro, and I'll get into the makeup in just a little bit, but, well, we're going to cut and light this thing. I'm going to go with just a simple straight cut. You know me, the ceremonial, no bits in the mouth. get some cold draw notes. A lot of cocoa, like a brownie. Some espresso. Interesting. Well, let's light the little guy up. All right, so on initial light up, there's some pepper there. Pretty decent spice, not spicery. Some dark chocolate and some espresso. Some of some some of the some 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 of some some time. Never mind. Some of the uh, the cold draw notes uh, did come through uh, on the initial light up. Definitely some pepper, some good spiciness. Pretty close to spicery. Yeah, some chocolate, some spice. Well, let's see if this little thing is nice. All right, everybody, I've cut, I've lit. I'm gonna jump into the first third, which for this cigar is like, you know, half an inch. Um, and uh, I'll come back to you and let you know my thoughts then. Be right back. All right, everybody, welcome back at the end of the first third on the Padron 1926 Maduro number 35. So a little bit of information about the cigar. It's a 4x48. It is a box press, uh, and they're all numbered on the band so that you can verify the authenticity of them so that you don't have, you know, any fake ones going around. Oh, it's fake, it's fake, it's fake. Basically, so Padron doesn't turn itself into Cohiba is my take on that one. But when you look at the blend on it, there really isn't a whole lot. Uh, the 
country of origin is Nicaragua and it's got a Maduro wrapper on it. That's really all it says about it. I'm reading from smokeincigars.com uh, or smokein.com, excuse me, uh, from smoke in, uh, smoke in cigars. That's really easy for me to say, isn't it? But from smokein.com, which is where I got this from when I purchased it from in that sampler pack, like I mentioned before. Uh, and it's tobacco that's aged for five years. It's intended to be a full body, um, you know, stronger cigar. So if you are newer to cigars, this may not be one that you're going to want to pick up right away. But in all reality, since it's only four inches long, it may be one that you want to experiment and see if you want to delve into the world of more full bodied cigars. Now, granted, the price point on this is not super cheap. It's not crazy expensive, but frankly, for for five cigars, according to Smoke In for their website, a five pack is $62. I'm not a mathematician. I just know that that's over $12 a cigar. And I'll leave it at that. So when you look at you know value and price, you've got to decide for yourself. But flavor notes on the first third, rich uh, cocoa. There's a little bit on the finish of like a star anise, which I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, but there's some good spicery there, uh, especially on the retro hail. It's got some good spicery there to it. And then the cocoa chocolate notes aren't there a whole lot anymore. They're there a little bit, but it's mostly just sort of like a, a rich, earthy, um, you know, just espresso, coffee, dark, dark, dark flavor makeup uh, that you can expect from more Maduro wrapped cigars. Typically, obviously, depends on what tobacco is inside it. This has been aged for a full five years. And in case you're curious about this one, there are seven different sizes of Atolas that this one comes in. Uh, this one, like I mentioned, is the 4x48 box press, but there are six other sizes that you could check out on this one. And so the burn is not doing too bad. It's a little bit wavy. It's not doing the greatest, but it's not terrible. So, I mean, as you can see there, it's it's just a little bit wavy. Overall, I can't complain. The ash did fall off once on its own in the first third, which is kind of surprising because it's only a four inch cigar uh, and it did fall off on its own, but that's just how it goes. So I'm gonna jump into the second third on this one, see how it progresses. Um, it does have quite a toothy wrapper on it. It is not silky smooth, it is quite oily, uh, but there's some decent tooth and bumps and different things to it. In case you don't know, toothiness just means like there's there's some bumpiness, almost like a sandpaper grittiness kind of texture to it. Uh, and all those little bumps are actually pockets of oil in the tobacco leaf. So when you get a cigar that is very bumpy or toothy, you know that there's gonna be quite a bit of oils in there and usually that indicates a little bit of a, a stronger cigar for the most part in terms of body and strength of it. Uh, so it's it's doing pretty well. I'm gonna jump into the second third and uh, I'll be back to you in just a second. All right, everybody, welcome back at the end of the second third. And it's a quick smoke. It's very quick smoke actually. <clears throat> but flavor notes in the second third, prominent black pepper. A lot of earthiness and prominent black pepper is what I'm picking up now. And I'm not huge on a ton of pepper and spiciness and things like that. So we'll see how that plays into, you know, my overall, is it noteworthy or not rating of the cigar. The draw is not too bad. It's a, a probably a, a medium draw. It's not too light. It's not too uh, tight of a draw. So it's it's pretty much right where I like it. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, the burn is not straight. I have had to touch it up a little bit you can see it's a little wavy there and then comes up so not burning the straightest for a cigar that's $12 but I mean each cigar is different that's how it goes so really flavor notes just strong strong full bodied full flavored now that the full body um, part of it, it it's not you know knocking me back it's not kicking me in the face it's nothing like that at all but it's definitely you can feel that it's it's got some good body to it. So that's what it is for now. I'm going to smoke it down to the end. And then I'll give you my rating as to whether I think it's number worthy or not. As you know here at Tobacco Talk, that's the rating scale. It's not 1 to 100, 1 out of 10, nothing like that at all. It's whether it's number worthy or not. So I'm going to smoke this down. I'll come back to you at the end, and I'll give you my final thoughts and my rating. Be right back. All right, everybody, let's wrap up this review on the Padron 
Anniversary 1926 Maduro, number 35. I don't know why I say that. You already know what cigar I'm reviewing. You're welcome. So final third. Flavor notes stayed pretty consistent, but the uh, dark, like, espresso, sort of bitter coffee, not off-putting bitter, but uh, espresso bitter coffee flavor notes, like a good espresso dark Italian roast coffee came through. It's smoking really well. The burn has pretty much straightened itself out in the final third, which I was pleased to see because a lot of times we don't give it enough time to see if it'll correct itself. I almost, almost touched it up. I thought, you know what? Let's not. The flavor notes in the final third, and I have overall enjoyed this for the most part. Some of the star anise and some flavor notes in the second third I didn't care for a whole lot, but all in all, at the end, do I think the cigar is nub worthy? I do. The craftsmanship, the quality, and everything wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, where I hoped it would be. And if you look at the, the cover image for this video, you'll see that actually the band is crooked on there. And for a company like Padron, you would hope that for the price you're paying, that the bands be put on straight. But it's a little detail, but it's all those little details that should make a difference for a brand like Padron. But I do think it's nubworthy. I think it's an enjoyable cigar. It is a full bodied. It still has not been a nicotine bomb for me by any means, but it is good. I have enjoyed it. And since I got this with the, uh, I think it was the Shorty for 40 sampler pack when they were doing the Battle of the Bands to support Cigar Prop, of course, I'm finishing the cigar with my cigar pick from Cigar Prop. So those are my thoughts on the cigar. If you have had this Padron or any of the other 1926s, there's a ton of them out there. Uh, then drop some comments down below for me as to your thoughts. Have you had this one specifically, the 4x48? Did you enjoy it? Did you not? Did you get different flavor notes? I'd love to continue the conversation down in the comments. And uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this review. And as you can tell, I've got a wall, a wall with drywall up in my studio. So things are coming together. So little by little, you're going to see things continue to progress as the studio is coming along. And for everybody that's reached out and asked questions, hey, how's it coming? What's going on? Hopefully you can see in this video the progress of the Tobacco Talk Media Studios coming together. So if you would like to support my channel and what I do, I do have a Patreon, and you can see right up here. It's patreon.com slash Tim. If you'd like to support the channel, I would humbly, humbly appreciate any support that you are able to provide. If not, no big deal, but it's there should you want to. But I think that's going to wrap it up for this review. So enjoy your cigar journey. I'm Cigar Show Tim. As always, I'll see you.